Hi there, my name is Chintz, this is Miniature Mistakes, and today we look at the differences between inks, glazes, and washes. When I started miniature painting, I looked at all the beginner guides, and every single one of them had one thing in common. The first four steps were always the same. Priming, base coating, washing, and then dry brushing. Apparently there was this magical concoction out there known as Agrax Earthshade, sometimes Nuln Oil. It was a supreme tool in the painter's arsenal that made your miniatures pop by making the shadowy bits actually shadowy. So naturally, I had to get out there and get myself a pot. And yeah, it was pretty cool. I mean, especially after it settled into the nooks and crannies and you would dry brush the highlights, it really made the miniature stand out. And then a few more videos down the YouTube tutorial rabbit hole, and I was introduced to the concept of glazing, courtesy of Miniac and Vince Venturella. It seemed like a more controlled form of washing less just slapping it on there, and more controlled, premeditated tinting. That sounded pretty awesome. I mean, it took away the chaotic nature of washes and gave you a bit more control, but not necessarily for the exact same application. I still wanted to try it. However, anytime glazing was mentioned, it was never really accompanied with the word wash, it was accompanied with the word ink. Looking at Vallejo's paints, the brand that I'm most comfortable with at this point in time, it seemed like they made both products. But from a distance and from the perspective of a complete beginner, they just seemed like thin, watered-down paints. So what was the difference really? Could I perhaps just Google the differences and make my life a whole lot easier? Probably. Am I gonna do that? No. What I am gonna do is take a few miniatures and go to town on them with a few different paints. In front of me, I have a few different paints and a few similar miniatures. In order, from left to right, it's Citadel Seraphim Sepia, Vallejo's Sepia Wash, Citadel's Gore Grunter Fur Contrast Paint, Vallejo's Game Ink in Sepia, and finally Scale Colors Intense Brown Ink. To keep the test as fair as possible, I'll be using all the paints from a dry palette instead of a wet palette. As you can see on the miniatures, there's a section with some grooves in it and another section that I've base coated. I'm going to take each of the paints mentioned and I'm going to use them as both a wash and a glaze on each mini. By the end of it, we'll be able to compare results and directly see the differences between the two. Now I understand that glazing usually requires multiple layers, but for this test I'll just be doing one to see the most immediate results. First up is Citadel Seraphim Sepia. I apologize for some of these shots, this is the first time I'm painting with a camera in front of me and it's a little awkward with the positioning and everything. I'm gonna get a coat of wash on his fur, then take some more paint, wick off the excess and tint the loincloth. Next we have Vallejo's Sepia Wash. The color seems to be a lot deeper and richer right off the bat. I had gone back and done a second coat of the Seraphim Sepia, but it still didn't turn out this rich immediately. Citadel's contrast paint is up next. Now I know this is technically neither a paint nor a wash, but it falls in the category of very thinned down paint, so I wanted to test it out regardless. In terms of fur, it was a little harder to move around than the wash, and I don't think I put quite enough on my brush. I did go back and do a second layer afterwards. It dinted the loincloth quite heavily, unlike what the washes were able to achieve. Now for the inks. First, Vallejo's Sepia Game Ink. The effect is far deeper and richer than the washes. 
While it does shade the recesses very well, it also ends up staining the surface much more than a wash. The ink is a little harder to control than the wash. I found it a little tricky to not leave heavy droplets on the surface of the mini. Scale 75's ink dense brown almost seems closer to black than brown when I first applied it, but in the pictures that you'll see later after drying it settles as a very deep rich brown. Much like the Vallejo ink, the effect is much more intense than the washes. I used a damp brush to soak up some of the excess after applying it to the fur much like you would on a wash. It did really well in terms of tinting the surface of the loincloth, it was still harder to control but in the following comparisons you will be able to see this shift in colour even with just one layer. Now when I used the inks, I didn't water them down, so I base coated another couple of miniatures to use both the inks again, this time with a little bit of water added to the mix. It definitely helped in being able to control it better, and while it did pool into the edges of the mini, it didn't leave heavy droplets behind as much. I used scale color first, and then Vallejo. Okay, so there's quite a lot to unpack here, and obviously my first assumption of inks and washes being the exact same thing and perhaps being interchangeable was horribly wrong. The difference to me seems to be a question of potency more than anything else. Yes, they're both very watered down paints, although the inks are a bit thicker, but not by much. But they are far, far more potent in terms of pigmentation. But before we go to the conclusion of the video, there's still one more thing I'd like to test. If washes are, to a certain extent, heavily thinned down paints, and inks are just more potent washes, would it be possible to make your own inks using the paints that you already have? As I understand it, glaze medium is simply transparent acrylic paint. This means it can thin down your paints but not reduce the potency of the pigment the way water would. 
For this test, I took one part Vallejo's game color charred brown and mixed it with one part glaze medium. I also took the same mixture and added a bit of water to it since the Vallejo and scale color ink seemed to fare better with it. I'm going to put the mixture without water on the top and the mixture with water on the bottom. The top layer is definitely feeling like an ink in terms of how thin it is and the kind of color that it's depositing. As far as the bottom mixture goes, once the excess is removed, the effect is really quite unnoticeable. I imagine if I kept the excess there, it would end up quite dirty and messy, so I decided not to do that. Here are the miniatures side by side. The GW and Vallejo washes pooled into the recesses really well, but there's a clear difference in terms of how much Vallejo stained the surface as opposed to GW. The contrast paint and inks behaved quite similarly. They flowed quite well, although not as well as the washes, deeply washed the nooks and crannies, but also heavily stained the surface. As far as the tinting goes, the washes were incredibly subtle, almost negligible, at least with one layer. Contrast paint recolored the surface almost entirely, and the inks did a better job of actually tinting rather than recoloring. Scale color was particularly good at the Here is a comparison of the tints after watering down the inks with a bit of water. Once again, scale color did the best job of laying down a very smooth tint with just one layer. On the far left, we can see the effect of a wash being put down as a tint. Hardly noticeable at all, barring the glossy finish. And finally, here is the glaze medium with paint. The mixture with water did indeed leave a subtle tint, but the mixture without water tinted the surface much like the inks did on their own. It's a bit messy and would definitely require some finesse in terms of brushwork, but it's good to know that it can be done. The glaze medium also behaved the way I thought it would initially where it would leave a little bit of the base coat behind, but still very much heavily tinted. I'm sure with experience I'll learn to control the inks better, but for a novice who's just starting out, this could be a handy tool. Glaze Medium is able to give you the same result as an ink, but it's much easier to control and reacts the same way any other paint that you've been using thus far would. I'll definitely have a play around with the ink some more though, and in the future come out with another video showing my progress on that. If the idea of that kind of content interests you, I'd appreciate if you show that like button some love, and if you're new here, hit the subscribe button. So all in all, and this might be obvious to some, I was definitely wrong about washes and inks being the same thing. Washes flowed a lot better off my brush and onto the miniature, but inks were far more potent and left much more of a stain behind. Watered down inks were definitely the way to achieve a noticeable glaze on the miniature. The contrast paint was the outline in that regard. I mean, it flowed like a wash, but it had the potency of an ink. I'm sure there are some edge case uses where mixing it with other paints or other techniques would really come in handy, but I'm just not there yet from a technical standpoint. Going through all of this and looking at the direct comparisons between each miniature was a really cool experience for me. I feel like there are so many combinations and an entire spectrum of ways that you could use these paints together to achieve very specific looks on your miniature. I'm sure figuring all of that out will come with experimentation and I look forward to playing around with these paints some more. Once again, if you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more, give that like button some love and hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, until next time.